So I'm here with uh, John Tarrant at the Garrison Institute on day one of his retreat on Zen koans. And it's appropriate that we would ask a question about uh, the creative process. Uh, I wondered about reading and writing poetry. How do such activities support us in our contemplative pursuits? I think meditation tends to be treated like a sort of Puritan activity where you're improving yourself all the time. And, and I think that's fine, but it's really fundamentally a materialist kind of goal. With a truly creative path, you're really listening to what appears and following that rather than telling yourself what should appear, mm -hmm. which is kind of fascist, really. Mm -hmm. Like, my mind should be calm. Well, if it's not, well, what then? You know, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So koans are really different from other paths like mindfulness or something because they're not trying to preordain an outcome. Mm -hmm. And they're more, I would say, more more flowing with the imagination. The universe is dreaming us up, and so in a way we're recording with that kind of creative process when we write a poem. I wondered if you might say something about um, whether there's a connection with creativity and morality. A lot of what Zen koans do is a kind of inquiry process that throws anything you're believing overboard, mm -hmm. including especially the things you're most attached to, like what a good person you are, the proper way to be, the proper way to be me. And, um, and so I think, I think there's an imaginative process at the heart of it. And you, when you throw, you throw over the things you're believing in favor of what you're discovering, mm -hmm. then the universe can talk to you and there's more compassion in that. Could you say something about the tension between accepting things as they are and striving to make them better? The inner life is objective and real a and in a way that, that we can often neglect because we're a culture that really is fascinated with making stuff and technology. And mm -hmm. I, I live in the Bay Area and mm -hmm. you know, it's wall-to-wall -wall Teslas. You know. It's great and it's a very exterior thing and it doesn't necessarily relate to wisdom. I always try to make the case for the inner life when everybody says, let's improve the world um, because then we can see things clearly. But then when we see things clearly, yeah, sure, let's do something about climate change. How can you tell when contemplative or spiritual practice is actually working? Our, our classic idea of wisdom is, you know, there's a bucket with wisdom in it and you pour it into another bucket. But the model is really different here because it changes the bucket and what's being poured all cha changes. Or, or we might say, you know, one common metaphor is if we're in prison, our classic ideas of things are about let's bring some nice furniture in and paint the walls, you know. But koans and deep meditation paths are really about what walls? You know, you kick down the demolition, not interior decoration, you know. And so, and when you're out of prison, you can't find the walls, so, so there's that. Um, and, uh, and so you notice that, and that means it's working to some degree. Mm -hmm. That uh, great old um, Coin master Lin Ji used to say, have confidence in the light that is always working inside you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Beautiful interview. <laughs> <laughs>